guys welcome to general surgery made easy the purpose of this youtube channel is to make learning general surgery easy fun and to answer any question asked in ms or dnb examination in an effective and an efficient manner so <clears throat> how to answer for any question asked in an ms or a dnb examination just keep three points in mind that is always answer to the point your answer should be crisp and in diagrammatic representation will always have a positive clinch over any others. So let me explain all these with an example. So let's go to the first topic. Imaging features in renal tuberculosis. This question has been repeatedly asked in many MS and DNB examinations. As you can see here, I have made a diagrammatic representation of all the imaging features that occurs in renal tuberculosis and this is an overview. Let's take a closer look into it. This is the same image with the naming. The first finding is infundibular stenosis with characteristics. As you can see here, I have depicted, I have depicted the infundibular stenosis with characteristics. There is a, a stenosis in the infundibulum with the dilatation of the characteristics. Um, it is seen in ultrasonography as well as intravenous urography. The earliest uh, urographic change occurs in the minor calyx. There can be mild loss of calicial sharpness. There can be mild loss of uh, these calicial sharpness due to the mucosal edema. With disease progression, calicial outline borders become irregular, fuzzy, ragged and later giving the appearance of moth-eaten calyx which is nothing but irregular margin of the calyx due to erosion that is the second finding here you can appreciate the third is in parenchymal calcification which is the most common finding seen in a plain x-ray abdomen but what you need to know this is a parenchymal calcification but what you need to know is the type of calcification which occurs in the kidney as well as in the bladder. A kidney it is diffuse uniform extensive type of dystrophic calcification which occurs in the kidney whereas in the bladder it is speckled type of calcification. It is speckled calcification. So coming to the Next finding is uh, cortical scarring, uh, renal scarring occurs as uh, in case of uh, calcification in later stages, calcification and scarring. Uh, fifth one is an caseous mass, like as you can see here I have named the fifth one as caseous mass which is nothing but a collection of uh, epithelioid and Langerhans giant cells. And the sixth finding is a hiked up pelvis or an curse pelvis. K E R R apostrophe is curse kink. It is also known as curse kink, uh, which is nothing but narrowing, which is nothing but narrowing and contraction of the upper calicial infundibulum and pelvis, causing this hiked up appearance. Other thing, what you need to know is what is a phantom calyx. Which is nothing but a diseased calyx, not opacified by contrast due to infundibular stenosis. Coming to the next finding, which is a urothelial thickening, as you can see here, the seventh one, urothelial thickening. Calcification does not limit to the kidney as well as bladder, it can occur even in the adrenal gland. And the eighth finding is an adrenal calcification. The ninth one, what you can see here, is nothing but central papillary necrosis yeah. sometimes the cortical abscess can rupture into the perinephric space which you can see as a thin cyst this is a cortical abscess rupturing into the perinephric space for initial papillary necrosis can also occur 11th finding and the 12th one is the ureteral stricture 12th one as you can appreciate here there is a stricture of the ureter then coming to the ureter in IVU, 
is again an important topic. The, what, what is the first sign in IVU? In the narrator. It is nothing but a ragged irregular appearance. Ragged irregular appearance of the urethelium and the subsequent sparsum edema fibrosis will follow stricture of the ureter and this is the sequence in which it occurs and you need, you need to know the site where narrowing of uh, ureter occurs it is first one is the infundibulum second one is uh, ureteropelvic junction and the third one is distal ureter Coming to the ne next finding this is the most classical finding that is the beaded ureter. Uh, these all strictures uh, pathologies will lead to beaded or a pipe stem or a corkscrew. Corkscrew ureter, beaded or pipe stem or corkscrew. Corkscrew ureter. Then what is this? The next finding, the next finding is a uh, thickened bladder wall otherwise known as timbal bladder there will be diffuse thickening or hy and hypertrophy of the bladder wall reducing its capacity and uh, this condition is known as timbal bladder and another minor uh, conditions which are seen in contrast city or granulation tissue and intravesical septations you can appreciate these findings also and the 17th finding is in urethral stricture Urethral stricture and this one is an uh, granulation tissue over here and this one is an intravesical septation and the 18th finding is in mesenteric lymph node calcification this is in classical CT finding you can see multiple mesenteric lymph nodes are adjoining the ureter causing cal uh, calcified and causing obstruction of the ureter the 19th finding is in pipe stem ureter. It occurs, you can see the pipe stem appearance of the ureter here. And this is due to uh, diffuse fibrosis in the wall of the ureter. And that last finding is a golf hole ureter. Golf hole, golf hole ureter, as you can see here, the golf hole ureter it is due to the fatless urethral orifice. So we have seen all the 20 radiological features in case of renal tuberculosis. Now this is what I call uh, this is what I call as a smart way of answering instead of lengthy long essay answers. Thank you and let's see again in another chapter.